Welcome to the IT free training video on CRL distribution points. A CRL or Certificate Revocation List is a list of certificates that have been revoked. This video looks at how you can share this list so that users of certificates can access this list to determine if the certificate they are about to use is valid. So what exactly is a CRL distribution point? It is a location on the network that is used to share certificates and CRLs. In other words, it is a shared location on the network that people can access. Let's consider why you would need such a distribution point. In another video, I installed the root CA. This CA has the network card disabled, so the root CA cannot access the network. This helps protect the private key on the server. On the root CA is a certificate holding its public key and a certificate revocation list. To understand how this works, consider a client has obtained a certificate. Before the certificate is used, the client should check that it is valid and from a trusted source. This is standard practice for a computer to do this before it uses a certificate, and the client should not use a certificate unless it can verify it is valid and from a trusted source. The way this is normally done is to have the client keep a copy of the root CA in its local certificate store. If this certificate has been added, the client will trust any certificate installed in that certificate hierarchy. But this does not tell the client if the certificate is still valid and has not been revoked. In order to do this, the client needs the certificate revocation list. In order to obtain the certificate revocation list, it needs a location to obtain it from. This is why you need a CRL distribution point. The client could also make use of an online responder to verify a certificate if it was configured to do so, but the CRL still needs to be available on the network, either for the online responder to access or the client to access directly. A CDP should have the certificates for the CAs on your network as well as the certificate revocation list. In this video, I will look at setting up CDPs to use IIS and file sharing. Once configured, I will also store the certificate and certificate revocation list in Active Directory. You may be wondering how does the client know where to look for these certificates and the certificate revocation list? The answer is that each certificate has this information embedded in the certificate so that the client knows where to look in order to verify that a certificate is valid. Information like the HTTP address of the web server or the LDAP location in Active Directory is there. All this information is configured before the certificate is issued so the client can access it to obtain any required certificates and the CRL. Without further ado, I will change to my Windows Server to look at how to configure a CDP. In this demonstration, I will configure the certificates and certificate revocation list to be available via a web page, file share, and LDAP. First of all, I need to install the IIS role. To do this, open Server Manager, select Roles, and then select Add Roles on the right hand side. Once past the Welcome, select the role Web Server IIS. There are no additional components required other than the default, so I will accept all the defaults and move on to the install part of the wizard. The process of adding the role takes a minute or two, but I have sped up the process so that we do not have to wait. The next step is to create a directory to store the certificates and the certificate revocation list in. To do this, I will create a new folder on the C drive called Cert Enroll. Once the directory is created, the next step is to share the folder so that clients on the network have access to it. To do this, right-click it and select the option Properties. From the Properties, select the Sharing tab and then select the option Advanced Sharing. Once I tick the tick box Share this folder, the folder will be shared. However, I need to add some permissions by pressing the button Permissions. The group I need to add is CERT Publishers, and I need to give them change access so they can read and write files to the share. 
Members of this group have the ability to publish certificates in Active Directory. Each Certificate Authority computer account is in this group. Adding this group to the share means that any Certificate Authority, or CA, can access and change the information in the share. This grants access at the share level, but I also need to change the NTFS permissions. To do this, select the Security tab and then press the button Edit. Once the CERT Publishers group has been added, make sure the Modify tick box is ticked so this group has access to write to the folder. Now that the folder has been configured and shared, it also needs to be configured in IIS to be accessible via the web. To do this, I will exit out of here and then open Internet Information Services Manager from the Start menu. In order to configure the directory to be available via a web page, expand down until you reach Default Website. Right click Default Website and select the option Add Virtual Directory. For the alias, I will enter in Cert Enroll and then browse to the Cert Enroll directory on the C drive. Once the virtual directory has been added, next I want to configure the directory so the files can be listed. If this is not enabled, the user would need to use the file name of the file they want to access. Enabling directory browsing allows the user to view the files on the website like you would view the files on the hard disk. To do this, select the icon Directory Browsing. On the right-hand side, select the option Enable. Once directory browsing is enabled, the user can open this directory and obtain a list of files that are contained in it. There is one more option that needs to be configured. The option is to allow double escaping. This is a requirement for the Delta CRLs. Delta CRLs hold changes from when the last CRL was created. If you do not run this command, the client will get an error message when they try to access the web server. This option cannot be configured from here and must be done from the command prompt. In order to perform this, I exit out of here and open Windows Explorer. I have a script that runs the command on a USB flash drive called Configure Web Server, which I will run. The command I need to run is appcmd, which is found in this directory. The command will enable double escaping for the default website, which is what is being used to share the directory using the web. In order for the setting to take effect, the web service needs to be restarted. This is also done in the script using the command IIS reset. Once the service has been stopped and started, the web server is ready to start storing certificates and CRLs. Now that the server is ready, the next step is to copy a certificate and revocation list to this server and publish it in Active Directory. To obtain the certificate and revocation list, I will make a change to my root CA. As you can see, I am now connected to the root CA. The root CA contains a certificate and revocation list that I need to copy to the web server. To do this, I will open Windows Explorer and open the Windows directory. In the Windows directory, I will open System32, followed by the directory Cert Serve. In this directory, there is a folder called Cert Enroll. This folder contains the certificate and revocation list for the root CA. If you watched the video on installing the root CA, you may remember that I configured the update period for the revocation list to zero. So, why is there a revocation list if no updates are going to be published from the root CA? Remember that the root CA is never connected to the network and in order to protect it. For this reason, there is no automatic way of publishing updates. If you want to revoke a certificate later on, this can be done from a subordinate CA, so there is no need for this function to be performed on the root CA. The root CA still needs a certificate revocation list so that the root certificate can be checked to make sure it has not been revoked. In other words, in order for certificates to work correctly and be checked to make sure they are valid, clients need access to the empty certificate revocation list of the root CA. 
Since updates have been disabled for the root to CA, the certificate revocation list will always be empty. However, clients still expect to be able to access this list. I will now copy these two files to my removable USB flash drive. Once complete, I will change back to my web server. Now that I am back on my web server, I will copy the certificate and revocation list from the USB flash drive and then copy it to the cert enroll directory located on the C drive. These two files will now be available via the web. The next step is to publish the certificate in Active Directory. What is happening is that the certificate is being stored in Active Directory and thus clients in the domain can access it. Since this server is a member of the domain, I can use this computer to store the certificate and revocation in Active Directory. The commands that I need to run I have placed in a script on the flash drive called add cert and crl to ad. See the link in this video for a link to download this script and others used in the certificate videos. The command I will run is called cert util. This command is the main utility used in Windows to configure certificate related services. The minus F parameter tells CertUtil that the certificate that it will be publishing will come from a file. The minus DS publish parameter tells CertUtil that the action to be performed is to store the root CA certificate in Active Directory. The next parameter is the file name and the certificate that is to be stored in Active Directory. In this case, this is the root CA. The last parameter is root CA and tells Active Directory what the certificate is. In this case, the certificate is for a root CA. Some other valid options include sub CA, user, and machine, depending on the type of certificate you want to publish in Active Directory. Further down, the command will tell you where in Active Directory the certificate has been published. Later in the video, I will have a look at this location to see what data has been stored in Active Directory. At the bottom, you can see that the command completed successfully. Make sure you check to ensure you receive this message. Otherwise, the certificate has not been correctly stored in Active Directory. The next command is much the same as the first command. The parameters are the same, except the file name has changed to the file containing the root CA's certificate revocation list. At the end of the command, notice that root CA is the last parameter. The last parameter is the name of the root CA. In this case, my root CA's computer name is root CA. If the computer name of your root CA is different, you will need to change this to match the name you have used. Once again, check that the command has been successful. Now that the web server has been set up and the certificates published, the last step that I need to do is configure DNS so that the servers holding the certificate can be found. To do this, I will change to my domain controller NYDC1, which is a DNS server. Before I configure the DNS records to access the web server, I will first open ADSI Edit from Administrative Tools under the Start menu to show where the certificate and revocation list that I published to Active Directory has been stored. First of all, I need to right click on ADSI Edit and select Connect to connect to Active Directory partition holding the data. From the connection settings, I need to select from under Select a well known naming context the naming context configuration. Once connected to the configuration partition, the next step is to expand down through Configuration, Services, Public Key Services, and lastly, AIA. Here you can see the certificate for the root CA. This is available for download from any client on the network. This certificate contains the public key for the root CA. The private keys are still safe on the root CA. Having the root CA certificate containing the public keys allows clients to check certificates that they use to ensure that they are valid. If I open CDP and then open root CA, you will notice that this contains the certificate revocation list from the root CA. Notice that under class, it states 
CRL distribution point, indicating that this is a revocation list. If I exit out of here, I will open the DNS Admin tool from Administrative Tools under the Start menu. This domain ends in local rather than com, and thus clients will not be able to resolve com addresses until I create a new zone. To do this, I will right-click Forward Lookup Zone and select New Zone. Once past the welcome screen, I will leave it on the defaults for a primary zone and store the zone in Active Directory. On the next screen, I will leave it on the default replication settings and move on. For the zone name, I will enter in itfreetraining.com and move on. On the next screen is the dynamic updates setting. I will leave this on the default and move on. This will lead to the final screen of the wizard. Once I press finish, the zone will be created. The next step is to select the zone itfreetraining.com and then from the action menu, select New Alias CNAME. What I want is when the name PKI is attempting to be resolved from the IT Free Training domain name, the request is published to Web 1 in the IT Free Training.local domain. To do this, enter the alias as PKI and then press the button Browse. From this screen, it is just a matter of browsing the DNS records until I reach Web 1 located in itfreetraining.local. Once selected, I can exit out of here and the previous screen, and the alias record will be created. To show how this works, I will open a command prompt and ping the address pki.itfreetraining.com. Since IPv6 is the default protocol in Windows Server 2008, the address resolved will be IPv6. If I added the minus 4 switch to the ping command, notice I can also ping the IPv4 address for clients that do not support IPv6. Now that the web server has been configured, clients can find the root CA certificate and certificate revocation list on the web server or through Active Directory. There is a lot of configuration and planning that goes into Active Directory Certificate Services. In future videos, I will configure subordinate CAs and start creating certificates that clients can use. I hope to see you in those videos. Thanks for watching this video from IT Free Training and see you next time.